little while ago, Chris Prater from the Baptist Church in Shepparton came and spoke to us about the prodigal son. Uh, delighted to say that he's come back and will continue with his thoughts on the prodigal son and the story, particularly focusing on the elder son. Over to you, Chris. Thank you for coming. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Uh, Jesus, you said my words are spirit and they are life. And uh, Lord, we need your spirit and we need your life. Uh, we pray, therefore, that in the next few minutes, as I try and bring your word, you would speak to us. You would speak to us, Lord. And uh, Lord, we, we would be people who hear, hear what you have to say. Lord, give us a message, your message this morning. Speak to us, Lord, that we have ears to hear what your spirit is saying. And that we would go out here changed, changed from glory into glory, for your name, for your sake, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, well, thank you. You've invited me back. <laughs> Gluttons for punishment. Okay, so this is, uh, this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through Luke chapter 15, uh, the last part of the chapter. Uh, okay, and uh, last time I was here, uh, before Christmas, I did something on uh, the prodigal son, parable of the prodigal son. And, uh, you know, when I, was, when I was younger and I first heard this, I thought, <clears throat> that boy was bad. Man, he was bad. I, I like this older brother here. He's a good guy. He stays with his father. He works the land. He doesn't go off spending his father's money in prodigal. He's a good guy, the older son. And uh, I feel very much like him. I, I feel for him. Then I read a book by Colin Bailey. Colin Bailey was a guy who, uh, probably 40 years ago, went around the Middle East to communities, to agricultural communities. And um, he, 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 all over the place, he kind of just told stories. And then, funnily enough, were parables from Jesus. But many of the people didn't know that. And uh, he said to the guy, you know, I'm going to tell you a story. And uh, what's your reaction? And as he told the stories, he was quite interested about the reaction that he got from these often poor, traditional agricultural communities in the Middle East. And he learned an awful lot of stuff that we do well to listen to. And here I am, Luke chapter 15, okay? The parable of the lost son, it says in uh, my NIV, and we're at verse uh, 31, I think, no, 11, 11, okay? So I'm going to read it through, and uh, then I'm going to, as I read it through, I'm going to make one or two points here. Jesus continued, well, he's given the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, so this is the third one in Luke chapter 15. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. As I said last time, the son is basically saying, you are dead to me, old man. You mean nothing to me. All I want is your money, and I want it now. Gross insult to his father. But the man, the father, had two sons. This is called the parable of the lost son. Okay? But just right there, what was the older son doing? He should have gone up to his younger son, to his younger brother and said, What? Did you say to our father? Oh, did you just come outside for a minute and beat some sense into you? <laughs> father, please don't listen to him. I'll sort that. What are you doing? Father, please stay, stay. Don't do anything, Father. Oh. That's what the older son should have done in the intermediary between the two. Silence. Nothing. He didn't do a thing. He did not play the intermediary between the father and the younger son. He did not assume his responsibility. 
Not long after that, the youngest son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need, so he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him into his field to feed pigs. This Jewish boy is now at the lowest of the low. He's feeding pigs. Oh, he gets a little bit lower, okay? All right. He longed, verse 16, to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Absolutely, he's on death's door and is completely out of it. This Jewish boy wants to eat pig food. You might remember what I said last time. When he came to his senses, hallelujah, when we come to our senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out, go back to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Let me be like one of your hired men. So he got up, went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, was filled with compassion for him. He ran out to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, uh, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But he doesn't finish his speech. The father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe, put it on him. The ring on his finger, sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead. And it's alive again. It's lost. It's found. So they began to celebrate. That's the parable of the prodigal son. Man, two sons. Let's take a look at the parable of the older son. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. Good man, working in his father's field, working the father's property, looking after things. Out there. Good man. When he came near the house, he heard music, dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Actually, it probably wasn't a servant, it's probably one of the little boys of the village cavorting outside, you know. Everybody was having a dance and supper inside and the, the kids of the village were outside. He called one of them. What's going on? Your brother he has come, he replied. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. Right. I understand now exactly what's happening. And my brother has come back. And my father has killed the fattened calf. And his dad's throwing a party. Verse 28. Finally, verse 28. The older brother became angry. And refused to go in. His father is throwing a party. The fattened calf has been killed. His father is throwing a party for the whole village. The whole village is rejoicing with his father. <clears throat> but the older son refuses to go in. So what does the father do? I hear my older son's outside. What? He's refusing to come in. <laughs> right. You four servants, I want you to go out there and I want you to bring him in. I don't care what you do. How much you beat him up. You just bring him in here. He, my older son, will honor me. The whole village is honoring me, and my older son had better honor me. 
or else there's going to be an awful lot of trouble for him. Already two or three of the older men in the village are saying, what? Well, apparently the older son's outside and not coming in. Tom, Dick, Harry, come on, let's roll your sleeves up. We'll go and teach that little flight of a lesson. This is, it, it, I tell you, Tom, Dick, Harry, if this bloke, if this son behaves like this to his father, what's our son's going to do to us, eh? We'll go out there and teach him a good lesson. If those servants don't want what we will, we'll bring him in. Ah, oh, dead, but he will come in and he will honor his father. All right? Actually, that's not what happens. <laughs> it's not, you know, that's lovely. So his, his father went out. His father leaves the feast that he's prepared for everybody. He walks out the door and he, instead of saying, bring him in, or instead of saying, forget him, the father goes out to him. He goes out of the feast, out of the celebration to his son. Very interesting, isn't it? Because when the prodigal son came from, remember how the father rushed out to him? Now he's going out to the other son. He, he what? I can't get this very well. He, he, he pleaded with him. So he didn't go out and say, get yourself in here right now. He pleaded with him. Please, my son. Please. Please, please, my son. Celebrate with me and the village and your, 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 your brother. You know, he pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you. Never disobeyed your orders. Oh, that's interesting. All these years I've been slaving for you. Oh, he's the oldest son. He's not a slave. They've got servants, they've got hired men, and the younger son knew that. And yet this is his attitude. All these years I've been slaving for you. Hold on a minute. No, no, you're my precious son. You're my, you're my oldest boy. You, you, you haven't been slaving for me. You, you've been working with me to build up the property, to build up the farm, to look after the animals, to look after the family. You haven't been slaving for anyone. Well, what's this attitude, Russell? All these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Oh, really? <laughs> really? You've never disobeyed your father's orders? Never! Never have I ever disobeyed my father's orders. Really? Mm -hmm. Or what about the party right now? Your father doesn't have to give you an order. You are expected. You've never disobeyed. My dear man, you are massively disobeying your father right now. What are you talking about? You should be in there. Even if you disagree with your younger brother, you should be honoring your father. You should be obeying what you know is this order. So my son is supposed to be in here celebrating. Never have I disobeyed. Oh, you have. You're doing it right now. Big time, mate. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. When this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home. You, 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 you kill a fatted calf for him. Actually, actually, uh, he, the younger son lived a pretty riotous life, but um, we're not told he actually squandered his money with prostitutes. I think the older son's adding a little something there. 
a little kind of something of its own. Squandered your property with gossipies. He comes home. You kill the fat and can't pay him. This, my dear old man, is gross injustice. And by the way, of course, he, um, he doesn't refer to him as his father. My father, my honored father, listen to me. Listen to my heart. I feel very unjust, very unjustly treated at the moment. No, no, there's a hardness here. This man, something's wrong here. When this son of yours who has squandered your property, you, you know when. When families break up, parents then talk to their children. They often will say, your mother, or your father. You know that? No. Not my former wife, not my former husband, but your father. That's what he's doing here. This son of yours. Squandered your property with prostitutes. Now, this son of yours, can we detect an insult here? And a big one. <laughs> like father, like son. Now, this son of yours, now, what does he do? I tell you what he does. He squanders money with prostitutes. It's me just like, but I won't say it to your face. I'll say it by now. How much have you squandered our wealth, my wealth, my inheritance, by the way you live? Okay, you might not have had prostitutes, but I don't know. You could have had a few that. I don't know. But he's like you. This son of yours. Massive insult. He didn't call him his father. He just calls insult and accusation, you favoritism. You always loved the younger one, right? never me. A slave to you, what does he do? Just like you. There's something deeply wrong with this, the older son here. We get in the picture. This is not the parable of the lost son. This is the parable of the lost sons. He had two of them, yeah? Both of them are desperately lost. One goes off and spends all half his father's money, you know, living in a far off land, calling his father dead. The other stays at home. But what an attitude this guy's got. Verse 31 My son. Oh, my son, says the father. You might not call me father, but I still call you son. My son, the father says, you are always with me. That's, a, that's endearing, isn't it? You're always with me. You, you, you are faithful, you're loyal, and I appreciate that. I, I, I know the other, the other son, he's gone off. He wasn't always with me. He went off. He did his own thing. But you, you have been faithful. You've been loyal. And I, 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 you know, I, I'm so grateful to you for that, my son. You are my precious son. Everything I have is yours. Well, of course it is now. He has two sons. After he's divided his property, one half of the property is gone. The rest of the property will come to the older son. Two short years, that will die. And the whole thing, the whole farm, will go to, his, to that son. All that I have is yours. But we had to celebrate that he died. Because this brother of yours. Now I'm not, I, I think it's said in a different way. It's not a kind of oh, this brother of yours. Just like him. I mean, you know, quite honestly, he went off to far off land and squandered his money, but look what you're doing. 
No, I don't think there's any attitude like that. It was this not problem. This problem of yours. Here's your problem. He is my son too. He's your brother. He's here. He's not this son of mine. He's, he's your brother. Isn't it? This brother of yours was dead. Tell him, Reeves, Jake. We should never come back. Good riddance is what I say. The younger son, the, the son would probably say, he was dead. Yeah, well, we're at least agreed on that thing, Dad. But it's alive again. Whoa, 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 whoa. But it's alive. It's not bad. Don't you see the repentance? Don't you see the massive change that has happened in him? He called me dead. It's lost. Lost to me, lost to you, lost to everything. It's bad. That's a sweet plan. What else can you do? It's bad for the dead. It's changed. Oh, you might not see it yet. I see it. This is what I've been waiting for ever since he left. And the older son was absolutely convinced by the love of his father, and he went in to the party and rejoiced with his father, and they all had a great time with their company and around. Well, it's the light of this place. Does it say that? <laughs> Thank you. Oh! No, it doesn't say that. It finishes by right now. We are left on a cliff back. The younger prodigal son repented and came back. He was in the party. Did the older son know him? We left on the cliffhanger. Did the older son know him? Was he, was he convinced by his father? Did, was his father's words win him? Or, or what? I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know, I want to say, happily ever after. That's what all fairy tales end with. I mean, sorry, this is not a fairy tale. This is a parable of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. And it's a warning to us all. Let's go back right to the beginning of chapter 15. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered round to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. All right. We get the picture. The younger son. It's like the tax collectors and the sinners. Mm -hmm. Who is the older son like? The older son. It's like the Pharisees mm -hmm. and teachers of the world. Will they come in to the party? Or will they stay outside? The father, of course, in this parable, the picture of God calling people in to the party, calling people to be reconciled to him. The older son, can you understand, get a picture now of his intense self-righteousness? He's like the Pharisees who teach us the law. We've got it sorted out. We don't need this Jesus person. In fact, this Jesus person is possessed by the devil. That's how he does all of his tricks. We're going to crucify him, give him half a chance, 
They didn't most of them go into the party. So at this particular stage is there's still an opportunity for you to go back. When I was a kid, I always thought the older son, he was absolutely right. Yeah. He's absolutely right. And his younger brother wasted everything. Of course he should feel like that. My friends, the one true living God has sent his one true living son into this world to die for every one of us because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. None of us is righteous. He invites us to a party, a celebration. When we repent, we can go through those doors into the party. If we want to, though, we can stay outside and wallow in our own self-righteousness. Luke chapter 15 leaves us with a decision and a challenge. We can go into the party and stay outside. I don't need God. I've got it all made myself. I don't need this Jesus. He can go off and do whatever. I don't need that. Because I'm okay, thank you, Jack. I'm afraid none of us are the position. This is not the parable of the lost son, no. It's the parable of the lost sons and the older son. And all of his self-righteousness is just like the Pharisees and the teachers of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, open our hearts and our minds again this morning. The realization that all of us have sinned very deeply, probably well, almost certainly farther more than we understand or appreciate how we have sinned, the depth and extent of our sin against you. None of us is righteous. But I can thank you that in Jesus a righteousness from God is delivered. It is in the gospel, it is there for us to receive. We can accept, we can repent, we can return, and we can go your way. Or we can stay outside, the choice is ours. Lord, I'm praying that anyone, anyone who hears this message this morning will see again afresh, I need peace with God. I need to repent. I need to, I need to set aside my self-righteousness. I need to leave up to you to be the judge, but I need your salvation. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, just pray that you would convict us all and nudge us all again. Come into the party. Leave your self righteousness outside in the dark. Come on in to the repentant, to the place where there's lights and party and joy and dancing. Because what was dead is now alive, what was lost is found. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you found that sermon helpful and would like to join us again on another Sunday. In the meantime, you'll find resources available at our website, on YouTube. So please do take the opportunity to have a look, but let's hope to see you soon. God bless you.